So um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about um, action learning and its uh, legacy and contribution to the world um, and talk a bit about its connection um, with Quaker um, values. So the founder, Reg Revens, uh, was a Quaker. Um, he attended meetings in Cambridge. He was an interesting character. He trained as a, a physicist and was a research physicist at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge uh, in the 20s and early 30s. And if you look at the date uh, when he left, it might give you a clue as to why he left. Um, he left when he realized that nuclear physics was going to be used for warfare potentially. So as, um, as a pacifist, he decided he didn't want any party to that. So he actually left uh, the Cavendish and went into the area of, of education actually in Kent, um, but got very active in education, healthcare, and actually particularly management development in the mining industry. And he started to use some of the ideas there that was later be coined action learning. So in the Cavendish laboratory, then in the mining industry, um, he started to get ideas about how he could use the principles of clearness committees in uh, those organizations. He became the first professor of industrial administration, as it was called then in the UK, we might call it management or leadership. Uh, he actually left that as well on principle when there was an idea in the UK that uh, we would import the MBA from the United States. Um, he said MBA stood for moral bankruptcy assured. So he was very against the idea of the MBA and that'll perhaps come out a little bit later. The source of inspiration, uh, Quaker practice, as I've already mentioned, his father was the marine investigator for the Titanic, and that was a very profound for, for Reg. Um, he asked his father uh, what he'd learned from doing the investigation, and his father had said to him at a young age that he'd learned the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Um, the knowledge of the engineers in building this boat and the um, wisdom of the sailors on the sea and the difference between the two. And the same thing happened in Aberfan, which for those of you who perhaps don't remember or are not from the UK, was a, a mining disaster in Wales where a, a tip um, spoil heap fell onto a village and killed all of the children in the village because it fell on the school. Um, and again, local people were saying, this is not a good place to put spoil. And the mining engineers were saying, actually it's fine. Um, so again, this difference between the wisdom of the local people and the knowledge of the, uh, the engineers. So it was in the 1970s that you'll start seeing the word action learning coming into being. So what is it? So well, this is how Reg Revens described it. He said, it's the central idea of this approach to human development at all levels, in all cultures and for all purposes is today that of a set or a small group of comrades in adversity striving to learn with and from each other as they confess failures and expand victories. If you read any of Reggie's work, it's, um, he's got this beautiful way of phrasing things, I think. So the idea that it is about human development, it is about, it can happen anywhere. It can happen in all cultures. And indeed, I'll give some examples later of, the, of some of the cultures and places that I've used action learning. But it's this idea of a group of people meeting together equally, comrades, with the purpose of learning from and with each other as they work through challenges or even, as he says, victories. Revens was, as you can probably gather, passionate that action learning should encourage people to help themselves. 
and also really urged us to help those who could not help themselves. It's founded on this uncompromising moral philosophy about how to be and how to act. And whilst action learning rules of engagement are easily understood by a lot of people, they, as Reg would say, have to be enacted via these moral values. And I've just put some things in there that perhaps will resonate from those of you who perhaps understand the Quaker clearness committees and how they work, or even Quakers themselves. So this idea that you start from ignorance, from acknowledging our inadequacies and our not knowing, to be honest about yourself, you know, what is an honest man and what do I need to become one, was a, a quote from a, a manager in Belgium who uh, Revens worked with. A commitment to action, not just thought. So not just a conversation, but actually committed to action. So Revens quotes St. James in the Bible, be doers of the word and not just hearers of it. To be conducted in a spirit of friendship. And there, Revens quotes his, his good friend, John McMurray, who also was a Quaker, um, all meaningful knowledge is for the sake of action and all meaningful action is for the sake of friendship. He also said that it's for the, the purpose of it is for doing good, not just for or in, but with the world. And again, Revens quoting Buddha there, to do a little good is better than writing difficult books. Action learning like Quakers and Quaker clearness committees operates with the values of equality, standing up to injustice and speaking truth to authority. And that can be quite challenging as I've discovered working with organizations. Um, Reg uh, talked about the idea of um, doubt ascending, creating wisdom from above, allowing the doubt of the people on the ground who work on the ground to create wisdom, let it rise to those at the top so that they can become more wise. One organization I worked with um, some time ago, a member uh, in an action learning set said, uh, that's all well and good, but doubt ascending in my organization quickly causes retribution from above. So it's not easy work and neither do we take it as being easy work. One of the other similarities between action learning and Quakers and Quaker clearness committees is this idea that you draw upon communal wisdom to address the taxing problems of life. And at the same time, acknowledge that the action from that inevitably falls to the individual. In an action learning set, as with a Quaker clearness committee, members do not speak to the focused person except to ask honest caring, challenging questions to serve the person's need rather than just their own curiosity. And that's a, a feature of action learning sets. So you could say that action learning sets started in the 1600s uh, rather than in the 1970s. And it's certainly um, uh, the, the basis of what we know as action learning. So where is it now? So if we go from the 19 or 1660s to where it is now, it's widely used. Um, there are, there's an action learning journal and I've put it up there, the action learning research and practice that's been going for some years where people come together to both share research about action learning, but also their practice. There are many action learning conferences happening around the world. There's a global forum for action learning.